In part three of our series on the Black Atlantic, we're looking at monuments in hidden histories. We're looking at the work of artists, including Donald Locke and Hugh Locke. Liberation. Trade. The sea. Freedom. Collective memory. 2020 in Bristol, the statue of the slave trader Edward Colston is torn from its plinth and rolled into the harbour. Look, genuinely, simply, to my mind, the toppling of the Colston statue was a beautiful moment. It was a moment of racial and social justice, but it was also a way of saying ideas aren't just theory. Ideas are also a way that we move in the world. The theoretical territory of the Black Atlantic says that what happened 300 years ago still has political and cultural and moral implications for today. The toppling of Colston is really the empire speaking back. It's the children of empire responding to this history of power it's an acknowledgement of the past and its consequences, its moralities, remain alive in the present. When you see artists whose work speaks to or is informed by or exists in relationship to theories like the Black Atlantic, you see artists can hold that kind of complexity about finance and economy and ethics and culture and identity and monuments and make work that is troubling and questioning, beguiling, fascinating, uh, mesmerizing. Always complex though. Always about the difficulties and the complexities of these histories. In Restoration Colston, Hewlock takes a photo of the statue of Colston and garlands it with all of these diadems and objects and ephemera, these kind of gold garlandings, which look rich, but actually they're made of very cheap toy-like materials. The over-ostentation of this, it's a strategy of irony. It's a way of saying, let's turn this figure from someone who's on a plinth, who's supposed to be celebrated into a figure almost of mockery, almost of absurdity, so over the top, we can no longer take seriously their role as an honored figure. Hulot wants us to look closer, not just at the statue, but at the figure being commemorated. The Colston work that Hugh Locke creates predates the toppling of the statue, but it asks exactly the same questions that people asked when they finally ripped down that statue. Who is this person? Does he belong in our world right now? Or should we be asking questions about his status and his raising up? It's really about saying that these are humans, these are morally culpable figures, and there's no time limit on asking questions about the moral culpability of those figures. There's no time limit on our memory and our relationship to the abuse and the killing of tens of thousands of people. Trophies of Empire by Donald Lott, the Guyanese artist. It's a collection of these strange looking, quite disturbing objects. They look phallic and they look violent. Donald Lott talked about these bullets, as he described them, as totems, as emblems and markers of the violence of colonialism. They speak not of celebration, but of violation, of subjugation, of chaining up, of locking up, of holding down. What does power look like? 
to the powerless? What does empire look like to the colonised? These are some of the disquieting questions that Donald Locke is inviting us to explore with Trophies of Empire. So what really brings us back to the Black Atlantic as a proposition. At its heart, this is about saying there's a morality to history. The connections between the present and the past don't fade, they remain alive. In this episode, we've been considering monuments and hidden histories. In part four of our series, we're looking at the afterlives of slavery in contemporary artistic practice. 